Hey there, I'm back. I'm here right now in our free fall dive boat. And what I'm doing is not a normal routine maintenance, but I'm gonna troubleshoot something related to the lifeboat engine. So the problem that I need to solve right now is normally when normally when starting the lifeboat, first we need to switch on the batteries. Either at one battery, number two battery, or both. And the next step is switching on the power. which is this one and upon switching it on there's normally an alarm with this thing here and it goes off when the engine is started the problem right now is along with the along with this alarm comes the temperature alarm from the cooling water of the lifeboat engine so as you can see when I switch it on So as you saw when I switch it on both the amp and temp was lighted So normally the alarm goes off for the amp when the engine is running and for the temperature it should only that alarm should only come when the cooling water temperature of the engine reaches its limit, its high limit. Uh, the connections for the alarm are just below the panel. And the transmitter for the cooling water temperature is here, right around here. So I cannot check it without taking out first the chairs and then the cover of the engine so it's supposed to be a small job but as always there are some complications especially when the design of a particular machinery is complex so now I'll be taking out this chair, this chair, and then later on the cover. Just to see if there's something wrong with the transmitter itself or maybe the connections coming from the transmitter going to the panel is somehow compromised. So we'll see. Second chair taken out. Now all I have to do is take out all these screws. So I was mistaken because look, if I cannot take this out. It would not come from here. Same is true here. If I don't take this chair out, I can't remove the cover. So as I said, supposedly easy job. It's getting complicated. <sighs> Tada! So I took out that chair and just loosened this one so that I have space to take out this cover. So I have now opened up the light bolt engine and this is the cooling water transmitter of the engine and these are its cables going to the panel. So to double check if that's really the cooling water transmitter we can switch it on and see
So now it's lighting. And if we disconnect it, now it's not lighting. So we can confirm that that is really the cooling water transmitter. So what I'm gonna do now is try to take off the transmitter and check uh, its overall condition. So this is the transmitter for the cooling water. It looks kind of dirty. So that's the first thing that we need to solve. If it will not solve the problem, then the transmitter is really out of order. So I put it back again. I cleaned it with some electro cleaner, contact cleaner, and wipe off some dirt. There was some there's a presence of mud uh, that was wrapped around the transmitter, and now we'll try to test if the cleaning worked so we'll see before taking out the transmitter i had to drain the cooling water from the system so i put it in a clean pail so right now i'll try to put the cooling water and then reconnect the connections and see if the alarm for the cooling water temperature is still activating. So now, we'll check for some leaks and then we'll try to connect back the connections okay so let's hope it works switch on If you're wondering if you're wondering why there's no audible alarm I s disconnected the wirings for the audible alarm because it was noisy and now let's see yeah unfortunately it's still an alarm That said, I even tried to heat it up and uh, to heat it up to around 80 and try to measure the resistance of the transmitter but with no avail. The resistance from a normal room temperature until 80 degrees Celsius did not change and it's quite high. The transmitter of the cooling water for the lifeboat engine had a resistance of around 35,000 ohms or 35 kilo ohms compared to other normal sensors which has around 2,000 to 3,000 ohms at room temperature and as the temperature increases it holds the resistance gradually decreases to around 200 300 ohms so we're now 100 percent sure that the transmitter is faulty already and we have to order for the replacement of that transmitter so that's it for this video i think i'll be making more videos like this which involves troubleshooting so let this be the part one of my troubleshooting series. I hope you liked it and 
feel free to write down your questions on the comment box and as always hopefully soon i'll see you in the next one take care